Hi everyone, welcome to this video lecture. In the last lecture, we looked at what the internet is. Today, we will dive a little bit more into detail and look at the components that make up the internet. So we will first consider the network edge and the network edge of the internet consists of the end systems, the access networks and the links. Now the end systems or the network edge consists of clients and <clears throat> servers and a lot of time these servers are hosted in data centers. Now what is a client? So for example, your phone, the laptop that you use, the, and the smart tablet that you use are all different clients. Now these clients are accessing different data in the, uh, in the internet. For example, you, you're browsing the web page of google.com. Now all this data uh, of say Google is hosted in a server farm or also called a data center. And these are these constitute the, ho the hosts, which comprise of the clients and the servers, constitute the network edge. Now, to access the internet, the clients have to be connected to the internet. So, the, for example, when you when you want to access some web page, you connect to the uh, to the internet or the router that you have at your home. This is basically what the access network is. The access networks can be wireless or they can be wired. You also use your phone and use basically 4G or 5G to connect to the uh, to the access uh, uh, to the base station or the cellular tower and then access to the internet through it. Those are that's also an example of an access network. The the internet core consists of routers and net and is and has many networks of networks which help in carrying the data through the internet. For example, in this figure here, the home network and the mobile network are examples of access networks. And the physical links, as you can see in this uh, figure here, comprise of both wired and wireless links. And then the global ISP, the regional ISP, they all constitute the network core and they consist of interconnected routers. So let's uh, move ahead and try to understand how these edge end systems actually connect to the edge router. Now the edge router is that router which helps you connect to the greater internet. The edge router for example is the router that you have at your home which helps you connect to the to the internet. Now the, we will get into the, all these details and how that kind of connection happens and we will do this as the course progresses. For now to access all that we need to know is that to access data through the internet the devices, the end hosts, have to connect to the edge router. Now, the two things that are very important and you need to keep in mind throughout this course is bandwidth and whether the network is shared or dedicated. So bandwidth is basically bits per second that you can receive using a network. So for example, when you're watching a video through YouTube, say, and your video stops, that's because that's mainly because you don't have the necessary bandwidth to play the video. So what we, do, what we would want from a good network is that the bandwidth is very high. That is the number of bits per second that, and that the end host can receive or send is really high. The other thing is whether it's a shared or a dedicated medium. One example of a shared medium is a wireless medium, where different hosts are all you trying to use the air on the air channel basically, to connect to the wireless router. A dedicated <clears throat> network might be something where you have an ethernet cable and you connect your desktop directory to the router at your house. Now, one classic example of this access net is the DSL network that you, that you had previously and some of you still might have. In the DSL network, you, what, you, <clears throat> what you can do is you can have both the phone and the computer connected to the same DSL modem. So there is a splitter which is shown in blue in this diagram here, which helps to split the data and the voice. The voice basically goes to the telephone line and the data goes to the, um, to the computer. And from there, that is basically your home. From there, it goes, <laughs> the connect, uh, there is a single wire that goes directly to the central office where there is the head and from there, it goes, the data from your computer traverses the greater internet. DSL is, is a technology that is pretty old and the amount of, of the bandwidth that you can get from a DSL network is really slow. For example, and downstream, you can get a maximum of 24 megabits per second 
and for upstream you could get a maximum of 2.5 <clears throat> megabits per second but in reality usually the upstream and downstream bandwidth is much lower than the maximum that you can get <clears throat> more frequently most of the houses today have used the cable network to access the internet now the cable network provides different uh, channels to your television and you also use the same cable network to transmit data to the internet once again there is a splitter which splits the, the data and the video that is being carried to your television and the structure here looks uh, looks as I shown in the figure for example every home has a cable modem to which your computer is connected to and there's also a splitter which splits the video coming to the television and the data that is coming to your computer <clears throat> in the, this cable with the kind of technology that is used is called frequency division multiplexing so that in so we'll come to this in greater detail later for now what you want to know is the the wire the cable wire can carry a particular set of frequencies and those frequencies are are, are divided and this then we call them channels so each of those channels is allocated for a different video for example the here in this figure here there are nine channels and the first six channels are allocated for video these could be different channels for example hbo cnn that are allocated Channels 7 and 8 in this figure are allocated for carrying data, which is the data carried from the, <clears throat> the computer. The, the, the cable, the physical media that is used in a cable network is <clears throat> a hybrid coaxial cable and it can provide much higher speeds than the DSL. For example, it could provide upstream bandwidth up to uh, 30, it could provide, sorry, downstream bandwidth up to 30 megabits per second. The only thing to note is that it's an it's a symmetrical, so the downstream bandwidth is much larger than the upstream bandwidth. So here is like the CMTS refers to the the cable head, which is be, which which is the head of the of the cable network. Another access net that you also use in your day to day life is the home network that you have. For example, it is usually a wireless network nowadays, so you have a wireless <coughs> router there. And that wireless mm, router or access point is connected uh, to a large number of devices. And then you could also connect your router direct, uh, your devices directly to the router. So in this figure here, the router is, is shown. And then what you have is the wired your, your computer connect, connected to this router using a wired Ethernet cable and then you have your wireless access point and then you have a large number of devices that are connected together to this wireless access point. Traditionally you don't see two different devices the wireless access point and the wireless router are housed together in in a single box which is shown by this dotted uh, dotted circle there so you usually only have a single device that you have and you place in your house but internally it is logically divided into a router and a wireless access point we'll come into the details and the differences between an access point and a router as we progress along this course now you these are small networks that we looked at such as the home network or and the cable network but you could also have larger networks for example that enterprise level network which is a, a, a network such as the CSUMB network or any other office network where you work at. so here there are a lot many <clears throat> many more routers and then there are both uh, devices which are which are connected using a wired <clears throat> network and an ethernet switch as well as wirelessly if you can see in this figure there are two ethernet switches and there are number uh, of web servers and different computers that are connected to these ethernet switches using wired links and then there is also a wireless LAN to which different laptops are connected to all these together are then connected to this institution router which is mentioned there which then carries all the data traffic from these different uh, dev devices to the internet now the wireless access networks that <clears throat> are, are really important and we just talked about briefly about the home network and how that is wireless but then that is that is a wireless LAN technology that we are that we are familiar with or we use in our day-to-day -day life 
There's also another wireless access network that we use a lot, which is basically the, <laughs> the cellular wireless network. Here, in this example here, you have the phone, the laptop, all connected to the cellular tower using some technology like 4G, LTE, etc. And then the cellular tower is connected to the greater internet. So to act, if you want to access, for example, the phone in the, in the figure to your right wants to access some data from the internet, what it does, it connects to the cellular base station and the base station <clears throat> is then connected to the internet. So any data that the phone has to get is gotten, is gotten through this base station. Now, to send, to get some data from the internet, the, what a host does is that it sends packets of data. So, for example, if a host wants to access the web page of, say, google.com, what google.com, the server of google.com does is it sends small packets of data to the host and, the ho and, and the, all, these taken, all these packets of data together, the host can then display the website of google.com. Now, all this mathematically corresponds to, <coughs> to something called the, the transmission delay or the transmission and the transmission rate that you can get from a network. For example, the entire message, the application layer message, when a host is wanting to download the google.com website is divided into a large number of packets. Say each of these packets is L bits long. Now the transmission rate or the rate at which your network can provide data to you is R, which is R bits per second. Now in order to transmit L bits over a, over a channel or, or a network which delivers R bits per second, the total time that is going to be taken is L over R, which is L, over, which is L bits and you have R bits per second, which gives you L over R seconds. So, so this is the amount of, of data, this amount of time that is needed to transmit a single packet, okay? We'll come into this detail, but I just wanted to plant the seed of, of how to analyze a network and <clears throat> what are the important factors that we need to take into account while analyzing a network. One very important factor is delay, and it is, it is basically the time needed to transmit an L-bit packet on, <clears throat> over a link in the, on the internet. We talked about the access networks. Now the access networks are going to be connected with, by physical media. Now the, there are different kinds of physical media and we will not get into the details of the different kinds of physical media that are there. And one of the very first physical media that <laughs> uses the twisted pair, which consists of two insulated copper wires that are twisted together. They, <clears throat> they can provide, uh, the category six twisted pair, for example, can provide 10 gigabits per second uh, rate. The, what the physical media actually do is they transport bits across them. So they are basically, they help if you connect two hosts on the internet, for example, two laptops using an ethernet cable, and the ethernet cable has a speed of say 100 Mbps, what it does is the ethernet cable can, what it means is that can transmit 100 bits per second over that over its cable. So that is the rate of that Ethernet cable. And what it does, it, it, tra it physically transmits the, the bits from one end to the other. More faster, uh, <clears throat> there's also faster physical media. And one of them is, is the coaxial cable and the other is the fiber optic cable. The fiber optic cable is, is really high speed and it carries, uh, carries data in, in the speed of light. And it's used basically to connect to carry data across continents. So if you want to, to say you are in the US and you want to, to access a website that's hosted in China, this, the, to carry the data, the data from China to the US, it has to pass through the, uh, pass through a cable which is, which is laid under the sea. And this undersea cable is actually made of fiber optic. So this, with this, uh, we come to the end of this discussion for today's uh, video where we looked at the network edge and we looked at the end systems, the access networks and the physical media which connect the different, uh, which connect these networks. And in the next uh, video, we'll look at the network core. Thank you.